All right, here we are in the KEXP live room. I'm your host today, Troy Nelson from Listener Powered Independent 90.3 FM KEXP, broadcasting live in Seattle and streaming 24 7 at KEXP.org and our free mobile apps. And these performances are made possible by people like you. So thank you for supporting KEXP. I am very grateful to be here in the KEX live room today because I am with this band right here who were kind enough to leave me an autographed copy of their new album, Life Under the Gun. And I'm talking about Military Gun. And if you're all ready, let's do this.
Boss. <laughs> Awesome. Military Gun live here on KEXP. Fantastic. And thank you all so much for taking the time to do this towards the end of us. this long tour you've been on. Thanks for stopping in Seattle. Thank you. Well, I don't know if you know this, we flew here. Oh, you flew. And our van got driven to Portland. <laughs> So we had to go straight to Portland for our show as soon How are you going to get to Portland? Uh, we rented a vehicle. <laughs> nice. That's awesome. I'm in the KEXP live room with Military Gun. We've got Ian, Waylon, David, Will, and Dylan all here. And I just had a few questions for you. Um, and Ian, you know, uh, this is what I uh, people call a pandemic band. Am I correct? This got started in the pandemic? I resent the term, but it is a truthful I know, term. I, I've yes. heard that term. And during the uh, pandemic, you just uh, started a new project, grabbed the friends that you just had around you, but then the more and more research I was doing, the more and more I realized how much of a Seattle connection there yep. is between Military Gun and Seattle. What can you tell us about you and Will living in Seattle at one point, and what hot dog place did you work at? So I met Will working at uh, Podogs on Capitol Hill. Is it uh, still he there? He worked at Auto Battery. He would like that clarified that he was a bartender, <laughs> not a hot dog maker, a lowly hot dog maker like I myself. Did both. I did both. He started at Podogs. I met him when he was a bartender. Podogs. Is that still there, I wonder? I uh, no, that is one of the things. It, it was like wherever Sizzle Pie is or was, I don't know. Everything changes so much here. I know. Uh, I'm from Enumclaw. Uh, Waylon is from Everett. And uh, he gra Will graduated from Belfair, right? Belfair High School. Wow. So yeah. we're... Pretty much a Seattle band. I was going to say, know? such a, a local band, really. But you're all living in Los Angeles right now. And so you record all these songs during the pandemic, and uh, things are slowly starting to open back up, and it's time to finally play live and get your music out there to a wider audience. How instrumental was the band Show Me the Body, and how did they help you? I mean, Show Me the Body is, you know, label mates, and, and a huge part of why we ended up getting a record deal at Loma Vista was literally Julian uh, you know, texting the owner of the label being like, you're so stupid if you don't sign this band. <laughs> uh, I mean, and, and on top of that, you know, I, I met them probably right before the pandemic and just there was a connection. And, uh, and then I ended up like drumming for them for a couple shows and we played those shows as well. And then we toured together in, in the UK. So I don't know. They, they've just have always been very supportive of us. And uh, just like, you know, I feel like we're kind of, tied it to a creative wavelength together. And, cool. and even though our music sounds nothing alike, but mm -hmm. there's like a kinship there. 
Love that. And you have toured quite a bit, even though you're a fairly new band, and people really react to your live shows. I see them jumping around or jumping off the stage. And even you, Ian, have done the same at other shows in the past. In 2019, you jumped off the stage at an ingrown show and dislocated a rib. Was that... Was that the last time you did that? No, I, I jump You've off the stage such, every night. You do? I still jump off the stage every... Uh, and, and if a band is inspiring enough to make me jump off a stage, I, I, would, I would love to. There's very few bands now that I feel that Show Me The Body would be one. I don't know if I have stage to, to Show Me The Body. But uh, yeah, no, that, that was immediately before the pandemic and I was healing that rib. And I think I had COVID right around the same time. Uh, but yeah, I was just stage diving like a... Like an asshole, <laughs> and I, someone's head went straight into my ribs. And I thought maybe that injury it. would be just like enough to be like, nah, I'm not doing that. You would again. think my age plus many injuries would would stop me, but it's not. At all. Uh, well, I, I hear so many things inside of military guns. Music, but what's interesting is all of you have such an eclectic taste in music, and a lot of the things that you grew up listening to and that you have loved really don't sound anything like Military Gun, like everything from pop punk to Modest Mouse to The Strokes to the ska band Pain yep. to <laughs> Alex G. And uh, as far as the music that is more aligned with what you are creating today, would you say that it all really started, Ian, when you were in fifth grade and you heard the Atticus compilation? Let us, more specifically, the song AM PM by American Nightmare. Yeah, I mean, that was like the blending of the genres, <clears throat> which I think a big thing that we do is take from very disparate places and then try to pack them into, into one. The Atticus comps, the Warped Tour comps, like all of that was like, you know, like very clean bubblegum, sh like pop punk living next to like gnarly street punk or ska. And, and uh, yeah, I don't know. It always felt like music should be kind of take from a lot of places. Yeah. And, and so I've never thought that, there should be ever like the shows should not be one style of music. The the like your album shouldn't necessarily be one mm -hmm. thing. So I've still I've said it a thousand times. I've still never heard another American Nightmare song besides AM PM. Yeah, that that was just it. That was it. Like uh, a well, one and done drop. Well, no, mic. I think they got sued at the time, and so <laughs> you couldn't find them online, and they weren't on LimeWire. So I was like, I couldn't find it. And uh, when you were young, didn't you save up enough money doing yard work and buy the Rancid album, Out Come the Wolves? I did, yeah. Was that, that was, I, was a, I was a hustler when I was really young, and I just, I would like take uh, the lawnmower around the neighborhood and ask to mow people's lawns so I could buy CDs. I mean, that's pretty punk rock, I think. And that's a good first album, I would say. You know how like yeah, some I people's mean, are embarrassing? I had, I mean, there's plenty of embarrassing ones. Like the <laughs> next time, you know, I got MXPX, which like I'm, I'm not as excited about. Uh, repping. <laughs> no diss to our boys from Bremerton. But. Sure. Uh, then in uh, years later, as you were growing up, in March 2007, you went to your first actual hardcore show. And I'm curious what it was like to experience that show that you went to with Ceremony, Trash Talk, and Allegiance. I mean, that was like, it was everything I was looking for at the time. Like, it was at Fusion Cafe in downtown Seattle, uh, the, aka the YMCA. It was a floor show, so like going to a show and having the band play on the same space that I'm standing it was was a very uh, cool thing for like a high schooler to be like, oh, this is this is weird, this is crazy, and like people were jumping off of ta like you know folding tables onto other people, and it was just like being I think I was 15 years old, and and just seeing the chaos that hardcore was was like match the chaos that I felt internally. So I was like, all right, this is, this is just what I do now. Like, I guess I won't ever do anything else. Yeah. If you go to a show and there's no stage, it's on the floor, you know that you're going to be in for something. We, we played a show on this tour in Detroit, a uh, floor show, and I had to apologize because I felt like we ripped everyone off because we're a short band. <laughs> and so I was like, I really apologize to everyone who has paid to see this show, but unfortunately, every member of this band is 5'7", 100% <laughs> of them, and uh, therefore, most people will not be seeing us. Just the front row. Yeah, yeah, yeah. just the front row. 
<laughs> awesome. Well, you know, a lot of uh, bands come here to KEXP, and we're so grateful to have all these bands, and, and I frequently hear them say, you know, oh, this was a, a bucket list uh, thing that we wanted to check off. Uh, do you have any bucket list future things that you want to check off that list that you would love to do as a band, as military gun, and be like, oh, that'd be so cool if we did this or went to this place or played a show here? Is there any that come to mind? Right now, my only bucket list is making another good record. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, if we can make a record that people like again, I'm going to be like, oh, cool, we did it. Just try to keep topping yourself? I don't want to even want to, yeah. Well, I do want to top myself as far as my own taste, but then I think that could be a runaway train where then you're just like right. eventually making stuff that nobody wants to hear. <laughs> well, I know that lots of people want to hear this because the reaction to this album, Life Under the Gun, has been so positive and the listeners have been loving it. And we just appreciate you taking the time to stop by KEXP and sharing your music with us. Thank you. Thank you for having us. This is something I've wanted to do for a long time. We've all wanted to do for a long time. So awesome. Waylon's done it before though. So he's, uh, he's a cheater. Yeah. So we have one cheater in this band of all five foot seven. I'm also he, five nine. Oh, he's cheating. He's not. Is he cheating? Nine, he's <laughs> you gotta neither cut the five, seven bit from neither earlier. <laughs> Well, once again, just fantastic, and uh, I know that uh, so many people are going to enjoy this on YouTube for years to come, for eternity, actually. Until, until uh, civilization crumbles. Right, which is going to be about what? 150 a year, years? A year or two, <laughs> year I think. Or two. Yeah, about a year and a half, so enjoy it while you can. now, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Well, once again, you've been listening to Military Gun live right here at KEXP. Discover new music at listenerpoweredkexp.org.